Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, how you guys going? I uh, hope you're all doing well, staying fit, and um, keeping safe. So, uh, you might be wondering why am I wearing this cocoa shirt? Hmm. Well, today's topic is going to be about celebrations, okay? And, um, you know, lots of people around the world celebrate in, you know, many different things in many different ways, okay? Um, and, you know, we've got um, celebrations like uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation, weddings, anniversaries, you know, um, Valentine's Day, Chinese New Year, uh, you name it. There are loads and loads of um, reasons why people celebrate. Um, and basically, that's going to be the topic for today, okay? And um, just, yeah, with regards to this, well, I'm going to be talking about celebrations and this is um, probably the biggest celebration for Muslims, which is Ramadan, okay? And we'll talk about, about, a, bit about that, uh, a bit about that later um, in terms of what we do in Ramadan and how we celebrate as Muslims. Um, but first of all, I just want to tell you guys about some other festivals that people um, celebrate, holidays and festivals that people celebrate. Um, so, just quickly, uh, there's a thing called the Chinese New Year, okay, I'm sure you've all heard of that one before. And that happens in uh, January or February. What do they do? Well, Chinese people celebrate with firecrackers and lion dances. Um, so yeah, um, it's just like a new year, um, but you know, um, the Chinese in, in the Chinese New Year, they, they don't uh, just use fireworks for celebrations, they also use um, the lion dances, you know. Have you seen one of those things before where um, you know, they might be at the mall in Indonesia? Um, in, in Australia, they actually walk around the streets and do that as well. Um, but uh, that would, might be a bit dangerous to do here in Indonesia. Um, but yes, I'm sure you probably have seen something like that at the mall, at the shopping mall. And uh, yeah, you know, um, they make a lot of noise with the drums and, you know, firecrackers and the, the lion dancing and, and what have you. So yeah, that's a, a type of celebration. Um, Valentine's Day is quite popular for non-Muslims. Um, it's day. It, it's a. It's celebrated on the 14th of February, and it's a day where people in many countries give chocolates, flowers, or jewelry to the people that they love. Okay, uh, quite big in Australia and probably most other Western countries. Uh, but then again, if you go back to um, you know the, uh, um, uh, I guess the roots of this celebration, you'll find that it is actually a pagan celebration, just like um, Easter and Christmas. Um, unfortunately, it's, uh, yeah, it goes back um, to, those, uh, to those pagan days. Um, but yeah, um, that's another popular uh, festival. Children's Day, this is an unusual one. This happens on the 5th of May, and um, Japanese families put up colored streamers shaped like fish in order, in, on, on, in, sorry, in honor of their children. So, um, yeah, maybe um, uh, if you've seen something like a long fish, looks like a kite where the, the wind can go in through the mouth and, you know, out the other end, and it actually tells the people looking at it which direction the wind is coming from. Well, um, they actually use something like that for Children's Day on the 5th of May in Japan um, to celebrate and honor the, uh, their children, which is, I think, a really nice thing to do, isn't it? I think everybody should celebrate that one because um, we all love our children and uh, yeah, um, yeah, something like that would be nice, okay. Uh, here's an unusual one, it's called the Day of, um, Day of the Dead and that is celebrated on the 2nd of November every year um, by Mexicans, okay. So Mexican families offer food to the dead and then have a meal in a ceremony. Um, I've seen this before you know, on YouTube, I think, how they um, all dress up in, as skeletons and, and they celebrate death. It's quite um, uh, scary and also um, interesting to say the least. But um, yeah, they are some celebrations that um, uh, are examples of some celebrations. Um, <clears throat> so just a few questions about that just wondering which of these holidays celebrate people 
Uh, and which of those celebrate events? Is it Chinese New Year, Valentine's Day, Children's Day, and, and Day of the Dead? Okay. Um, next question is, see if you can answer this one. Do you celebrate these or similar holidays in your country? And last question, two questions. What other special holidays do you have and what's your favorite holiday or festival? Okay. Interesting. See if you can um, just pause this video if you want and try to answer those questions. Um, and then we'll move on to some, maybe some vocabulary that might help you to explain how you feel about some celebrations. Okay, so um, yeah, here are some, uh, some, some words um, to describe celebrations. Okay, so first one is anniversary, cake, cards, dancing. Just repeat after me and try and practice your pronunciation at the same time. Um, fireworks, fireworks, flowers, flowers, fruit punch, fruit punch, parade, parade, party, party, or in Australian we say party, party, presents, presents, roast turkey, and wedding. Okay, they're just some basic words that, you know, might be of use to some people um, when they're talking about celebrations. Um, talking about people talking about celebrations, I want to um, read you a quick uh, little thing here from three different people celebrating three different things. And hopefully from this example, you might be able to use these to, um, to help you to explain some of the festivals and holidays that you like to celebrate, okay? So the first one is uh, from an old lady. Okay, um, she says, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. It's a day when North Americans celebrate the harvest. Okay, uh, the harvest is basically what they sow in their fields. Okay, what they pl plant um, to harvest and to eat. Everyone in the family gets together at our house. I cook a large turkey and serve it with cranberry sauce. Mmm, that sounds delicious. Um, so yes, that is a Thanksgiving. It's a very common celebration in America. Um, and there is, again, once again, history behind that. And if you want to know more about the real history behind it, you can always do your own research and, uh, and find out, okay? Um, next is from uh, a girl in her 20s. Um, she says, February 14 is the day when people give cards and presents to the ones they love. I'm really looking forward to Valentine's Day this year. I already have the perfect gift for my boyfriend. Okay, so um, this girl uh, obviously is talking about Valentine's Day, yeah? And um, I'm sure you've probably heard of it. Um, so it's basically a day where people celebrate love, okay? and. Uh, yeah, for people who are married or not married, okay. Um, I don't think it's very, it's very big here in Indonesia, just like Thanksgiving is not very big here. But uh, I'm sure with the non-Muslims, they might, they, you might still find people who celebrate that, okay. Um, so yeah, that's another celebration that people uh, commonly celebrate here uh, in the West. And the last one is from a guy in his mid-30s. He says, I can't wait till the end of the year. New Year's Eve is a night when I have fun with my friends. We usually have a party at someone's house. We stay up all night and then go out for breakfast in the morning. Okay, so yeah, once again, uh, that's a very common festival or holidays or holiday that people celebrate and that is New Year's Eve, okay? Um, so yeah, so New Year's Eve is a night when um, obviously people have fun with their friends and their families to celebrate the end of one year, Gregorian year, um, and then the start of a new year, okay? Um, just like we had last year with um, the changing between 2019 to 2020. Um, so every year that happens, and actually it's quite, that's a quite uh, probably the biggest festival that people like to celebrate um, around the world, and that is New Year's Eve. Um, and yeah, sure, um, you know, in Australia they do the same thing, you know, they, um, 
they have fun with their friends and uh, usually what happens is they go out to the city, they watch the fireworks and then they end up going to um, either a party or someone's house and uh, yeah, they stay up all night, you know, talking, laughing, joking, having fun. Um, probably not with people with families or kids like myself. We wouldn't do that. We might just probably, you know, see if, if you know, some fireworks. Um, if not on TV, probably there, if it's not too hard to get to. And yeah, probably go to sleep. I mean, that's if, if, um, if that. Um, most Muslims that I know don't actually celebrate New Year's Eve or Valentine's Day or Thanksgiving. But um, I'm sure in the West, a lot of people, other people do. So uh, it's always good to know how to explain, you know, or yeah, talk about some of those celebrations. Um, even like birthdays, you know, very common celebration. How do you celebrate your birthday? Um, what else? Anniversaries, you know, graduations and, and, uh, and other things like that. Well, um, to help you with uh, describing those days, you can use a thing called relative clauses of time, okay? So a relative clause of time is basically when you say um, it's a day when, okay? So, for example, uh, New Year's Eve is a night when. So a night when is actually a, a relative clause of time. Okay. Um, so New Year's Eve is a night when I have fun with my friends. Or you can say February the 14th is a day when people give cards and flowers to the ones they love. And for Thanksgiving you could say Thanksgiving is a day when North Americans celebrate the harvest. Okay, so these relative clauses of time is quite common to use, okay? Um, so you might want to start practicing those sentences. I'll give you a few more um, to help and then uh, a few more other examples maybe to give you some, you know, some practice. So for example, uh, New Year's Day, as I said, is, uh, is a day when people have parties with families and friends. Um, April Fool's Day is a day when people sometimes play tricks on their friends. Um, May and June are the months when Brazilians celebrate Carnival. Okay, that's a very big um, celebration in Brazil. It's called Carnival. Carnival or Carnival. Um, it's the same thing. Um, <coughs> what else? Uh, Valentine's Day, again, is a day when people express their love to someone. Um, for, uh, for Labor Day, okay, Labor Day is a day when people in many countries honor workers. I think we had one just the other week, um, but we don't celebrate it here in Indonesia. I don't know why, but I'll tell you what, in Australia and other Western countries, when there's Labor Day, it's actually a public holiday, yeah? So nobody goes to work um, because Labor Day is just that it celebrates those people who work hard labor is hard work okay or work um, physical work so labor day is a day when basically those people who do physical work or blue collar workers don't um, don't necessarily have to go to work they celebrate that day because they feel that I guess you know they work the whole year really hard using their hands and all their muscles and to you know sweat blood and tears and so they, they celebrate and they, they appreciate those people who do those, that kind of work. Um, and by, by that I mean they celebrate you know, um, in, in Labor Day, okay, which is once a year. Um, so yeah, February is the month when many young adults choose to get married. I think that's because of Valentine's Day thing, okay, it's more superstitious than anything, but you never know. Um, okay, so let's see if you can complete these sentences with your own information and, uh, and see how you go. So, winter is the season, finish the sentence, blah, blah, blah. Birthdays are days, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, spring is, the, is a time of year, blah, 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 okay. Don't forget to use the relative clause of time, when, yeah. Um, etc. Mother's Day is a day when blah blah blah. July and August are the months. Finish that sentence. And a wedding anniversary is a time. 
finish that sentence. Okay, so there's a bit of information there about holidays and festivals and a little bit of speaking practice for you as well. Okay, um, so um, my uh, actually, yeah, I was um, thinking another way uh, to also actually, since we're talking about the grammar topic of grammar, I might just explain this. Adverbial clauses of time. It's very similar to the um, relative clauses of time, okay? But with the relative clauses of time, we use, usually put them in the middle, okay? So like um, New Year's Eve is a night when, you know, people have fun with their friends. So you, that's in the middle using relative clauses of time. But you can also use adverbial clauses of time, and that's when we use um, the, those clauses at the beginning of the sentence. So you can say, for example, uh, when people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony in a shrine. Okay, so when people get married is the adverbial clause of time. And we usually put them in the, at the beginning, okay? Uh, another example is, after the food is served, the guests, give speeches or sing songs. Okay, that's probably talking about the wedding, a wedding. Um, or birthdays, I guess, it could also be that as well. And then a last example is, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. Okay, so obviously talking about weddings, and I think that's a very common thing to do um, here and around the world. Okay, so where the bride and the groom, uh, the newlyweds, as we say, give um, the, the guests presents before they leave, okay, um, like little things, yeah, it could be a frame, it could be a cup, it could be just uh, a little bit of a memorabilia so that people um, uh, can, can remember um, their marriages, uh, the, you know, the time when the people got married and maybe even send them some blessings and some prayers for them to, uh, to continue. All right, so uh, there's a little bit of grammar there, which will help you to talk about these special events in your life. Um, there are also some unique customs around the world, okay, and what people do to celebrate um, special events. Um, so yeah, let's uh, talk about my probably yeah my my most favorite um, special event. Um, so, I'll put this in question form, question and answer form, to keep it simple. So, what is the, the, uh, the holiday or festival, um, yeah, sorry, what is your favorite uh, holiday or festival? Okay, well, good question. Um, I just want to uh, just quickly have a, a look here. Yeah, so... What is your favorite holiday or festival? Well, I have to say Ramadan. Yeah, Ramadan is my favorite holiday festival. Um, or Eid al-Fitri is the holiday festival. But, I mean, the whole month is really special for Muslims. And uh, we are actually in the, uh, the last few days of Ramadan this year for 2020 or in the Islamic calendar, 1441. Um, and it is quite a special and a unique time of year for all of us who celebrate this amazing time um, uh, called Ramadan. So Ramadan has been around for hundreds if not thousands of years, um, basically since the beginning of Islam. And you know, I'm not a sheikh or you know, an imam or anything, so I'm pretty sure actually most of you guys probably know a lot more about Ramadan than I do. Because um, you know, I grew up in the West, and I didn't really get in, in, into my religion until I was in my you know early twenties. So, um, yeah. Uh, but fact still stands that it is an amazing time of year for um, for for us Muslims um, because we yeah we, we get so much out of this this month. Um, it's such a special month. There are you know so many things that happened um, Islamically you know, in the Islamic history, uh, in this time of month. For example, like the, uh, the Quran coming down, yeah? Um, so this Quran, this holy Quran that we have, and that we cherish, and that we, um, you know, 
read you know so often and that we adhere to um, as, as they are the words of, of our God Allah the one and only creator and sustainer of all things um, and there are so many reasons why Muslims celebrate this, this glorious month um, so yeah uh, let me see there are um, many reasons actually there is actually a hadith that says uh, this is from the messenger of Allah وسلم, he says whoever fasts during Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's reward then all his past sins will be forgiven okay that's from Bahari and that's a beautiful quote another beautiful quote from our um, beloved Prophet Muhammad so I'll read that again because it's such a good quote whoever fasts during Ramadan out of sincere faith and hope to attain Allah's reward then his past sins will be forgiven amazing okay uh, another great quote this is actually straight from the Quran um, it says I can't read the Arabic very well so I'm just going to read the English translation it says O oh, you who have believed decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous okay so I think this is from Surah Bukhara, uh, Bukhara uh, what is it? Uh, the, the cow not Bukhari uh, the second Surah Baraka yeah Baraka Surah Baraka verse 183 that's what it says. Yeah, I'll repeat it again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. O oh, you who have believed. Okay, so O oh, you who believe. Decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you. So, um, decreed means uh, commanded um, towards you. Yeah, um, is that you should fast as it was commanded for those before you. Yeah, before you meaning not just the Muslims in your life, but also before Islam came. Yeah, in in Christianity there was fasting and they used to fast and before that there was Judaism, Judaism which is Jewish people and they used to fast and I still, I still believe um, the, the real truth the believers of those faiths still fast um, in Buddhism they have some form of fasting even so if you go back past before Judaism um, there were other religions that came on you know that came um, to the world like Hinduism, Sikhism Buddhism um, and all these other different faiths believe it or not they all have a form of fasting in them so just another proof that Allah did send around about 124,000 prophets and messengers um, to to warn the people yeah uh, of, of what their main goal is in this in this life so yes it's a, it's an amazing time of year and I've always loved um, to fast okay not uh, just so that we can celebrate at the end and then we'll talk about about a little bit about that um, in the end uh, before I finish my video but I think um, here are some uh, some things that we you know we should follow when we're fasting I guess um, because you know when we're fasting you know fasting is basically it's a day when Muslims um, let me just put it this way it's a it's a day when uh so ramadan is a day is a month when muslims celebrate or no when muslims fast um for a whole month for 30 days from sunrise or dusk until sunset which is dawn so from dusk till dawn from sunrise to sunset muslims do not eat or drink um which is fasting for a whole month yeah from the new moon to the to the to the new moon okay um, and so I'm um, you know being you know living in Indonesia I'm sure all of you all know what fasting is okay um, and why we do it and there are I mean just recently scientists have proven that there are many many benefits of fasting um, so huge in fact that it can cure major illnesses and diseases like cancer even so subhanallah you know we have such a blessed religion 
um, and that uh, and we are you know blessed to be Muslims really truly we are um, but yeah what I mean by fasting also when we as Muslims is that we have to understand it's not just about abstinence from food and and liquids or drinks so not eating or drinking but here's a little thing I found um, which will be very interesting for you to know it's from Sheikh Abdul Aziz Baz and um, in which way do our limbs fast during Ramadan okay so the fasting of the limbs is dis distancing them from that which Allah has pro prohibited from them okay so in terms of the tongue all right um, so it's not just about food and water but here's a few things you guys should think about when you're fasting and that is the tongue the tongue fasts or refrains from that which Allah has prohibited it from for example backbiting okay which is talking behind people's backs um, tail carrying between people so like just yeah uh, what do you call it in Bahasa Indonesia um, uh, lomba, omba, lomba, londa whatever I don't know when you talk behind people's you know when you make trouble between two people deliberately okay starting um, giving them uh, more problems lying of course is haram and that which is similar to this okay so sim that those that are similar to that so that is the tongue we have to you know remember it's not just the, the stomach okay um, the next is our hands so the hands fast or refrains from that which Allah has prohibited it from for example stealing okay taking things that are, don't belong to you transgression okay or oppression all right um, which is uh, yeah um, hurting other people and aggression okay same thing and and things that are similar okay um, so yes we do not do that with our hands also the feet okay so the foot keeps away from that which Allah has pro prohibited it from so it must not proceed <clears throat> or, or uh, sorry, and walk towards that which Allah has prohibited. So we must not go to anywhere or places that we shouldn't go to, um, especially when we're fasting. All right. Um, yeah, like pub, pubs and clubs. You know what I mean. Okay. Now um, next one is uh, the stomach. Okay. So likewise, the stomach should be safeguarded from eating that which is haram. Okay. A person must be safeguard his stomach from prohibited foods okay so obviously we're not allowed to eat during Ramadan during the day but at night we're also not allowed to eat anything we want okay we're obviously things like pork um, amphibians uh, snakes bats you know things like that we're not allowed to eat um, so yeah actually talking about the stomach the best thing to do is um, to eat healthy food especially when you're breaking your fast it's actually a sunnah to eat a date okay three dates preferably um, to to break your fast and the wonders of that is also amazing. You can look it up. Um, the amazing wonders of, uh, of, of kurma or dates. This is an amazing thing. And also try to keep healthy. You know, I see a lot of Indonesians, they eat, they break their fast with uh, like gorengan, um, you know, uh, like risols, like, you know, gorengan, you know, like tempeh, tahu, all that stuff. That is probably the worst thing you could actually break your fast with. And um, so please don't break your fast with that. If anything, break your fast with a glass of water, some dates or some fruits, or even a cup of tea. Anything that's sweet, that's also a sunnah. Um, that's what the Prophet Muhammad used to do. Okay, and last but not least is he must safeguard his hearing from listening to that which Allah has prohibited. For example, musical instruments, backbiting, tail carrying and other things like this. Um, so yes, you know, we shouldn't be wasting our time listening to, to like music or watching movies and listening to it. Well, you know, this is the month of Ramadan. This might even be the last Ramadan you may even um, be able to participate in because we don't know when we're going to, you know, live or die. I mean, when we're going to go, when we're going to die, when we're going to get sick, when we won't be able to do the fasting anymore. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind, guys. Okay, it's not just about drinking and eating. Okay, there are more things. Um, involved in, in, in fasting and uh, and obviously the, the reward is with your Lord okay if you like I said at the beginning of um, with the hadith if you do this out of sincerity and from from your heart um, your, your sins will be forgiven and you will also obtain a big reward from Allah okay and uh, um, inshallah that will be heaven yeah the highest heaven Jannatul Firdaus 
Okay, so um, on that note guys, uh, I want to uh, just leave you with one more thing here. And um, this is uh, from uh, actually just a little thing that I found on the um, Instagram. So I'll just read it for you, for you guys to think about, okay? For many people, Ramadan is treated like the start of a new year. Just as, just as people have New Year's resolutions, they have Ramadan resolutions as well. So during this special month of focusing on our relationship with Allah, we might end up focusing more on the dunya, the life of this world instead. Social media can be a great and beneficial tool in keeping touch with loved ones, staying informed and even getting religious reminders. However, keeping in mind that sometimes too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Um, at best, social media can be incredibly addictive. This means that we can lose large chunks of our daily, uh, of our daily online without, really, you know, yeah, without realizing it. Okay, so we can lose a lot of our day on spending our time online without even realizing it. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, spending less time watching the news or scrolling through social media means having more time to read the Quran and offering extra prayers which is what we should be doing. And this month is vital for all of us. Ramadan is the month of du'a and we need those prayers now more than ever. Spending our time with, uh, in more beneficial ways to please Allah and remind us to turn to Him even more. May Allah rem remove this calamity from all of us, this coronavirus, um, or any calamity you may have, uh, and protect all of humanity from illness and grief. Amin, amin, ya Rabbil Alamin. On that note, I'll leave it there for you guys. Um, it's a bit longer than usual, but yeah, I uh, hope you all had a great month and are going to have um, the, uh, an even greater final last few days of the, uh, the, the month of Ramadan. Stay blessed, guys. I wish you all the best. May Allah accept all your prayers, all your fasting and all your good deeds and good intentions. Don't forget, intentions are very important. And um, inshallah, we'll all be back to, uh, back to school in the next couple of months after the um, Eid al-Fitri. The celebration of Ramadan and uh, the, the Ramadan holidays, okay, Eid al-Fitri holidays. And inshallah, 1st of July, we should all be back at school, inshallah, but we'll see what happens. Allahu Alam. Keep praying for us, pray for me, pray for your family, keep well, stay healthy, and uh, until next time, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.